good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If you'll stand with us this evening, we're going to open with Are You Washed in the Blood? Some good rain, but it's nobody got washed out, right? Well, it's good. Amen. Let's pray. Most gracious and precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you right now and we just thank you, dear God, for this opportunity we can come and be in your house and Lord, just to administer, dear God, in your word and learn and grow. And Father, I just pray you just have your will and way in everything that's said and done tonight, dear God. Thank you, dear God, for these that are here and those that may be on their way. Pray your protection will be upon them, dear God. Thank you for our youth that are on the youth trip. Pray, dear God, that you would just bless in a mighty way there, dear God. Father, we thank you, dear God, for this offering. Ask you to use it for your honor and your glory, and we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.
Drowning in the water is deep. Troubles turn to triumphs when you lay them at his feet. Hold your head above the water. Keep your eyes fixed on dry land. Climb into the lifeboat and take the master's hand. Won't you roll? Even while the storm still rages and roll your burdens on the rock of ages. Amen. If you'll stand with us again this evening, we're going to sing wonderful words of life.
Amen. I want to ask the question before we get done. How many of you out there are my friends? Will you raise your arms? Man, everybody raise their arms. Okay. What's my favorite color? Miss Carol was right, it's blue. You're my friend, but you didn't know my favorite color? You never asked. To be a friend, you got to know something about somebody. You got to know something about somebody. And if you're not a, a friend, that's willing to learn about your friend, then guess what? You're not really a friend. You're not really a friend. So I, I was thinking about this, and I was studying and reading and everything, and this comes to me about friendship. So we're going to talk about friendship tonight. Amen? So what kind of, what kind of friend are you? A true friend is a gift from God and can never be replaced because they are precious and we ought to do all we can in order to make our friendship last. The most important friendship a person can have is Jesus Christ. The closer we walk with him, the more compassionate towards others we will become. True friends are a treasure who love and cares for you as you are. And notice what he says. A true friend cares for you just the way you are, not what you want to be. They see you not only as what you are, but what you can become. They are there to catch you, when you fall, encourage you to keep you going. They never put you down, and they always are there to lift you up. I'm talking about a true friend. A true friend. So let's look at the um, kind of friend that you need to stay away from. The first one I put is a gossip monger. A gossip monger. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 19 says, And he that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets, and therefore meddles not with him for that, excuse me, that flatters with the lips. Proverbs eleven thirteen 13 says, A talebearer reveals secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit conceals the matter. What is a gossip monger? He's a person who enjoys talking about other people's private lives. A gossip monger. He's a person that sits there on your every word and then he goes and tells it to everybody. And if I'm not mistaken, there's not a one of us in here that has not had a gossip monger among you. That claimed to be your friend, there really wasn't. When you were going through trials and tribulation, this person was the one that, that had more fun telling people about what you were going through. And yet, when you confront them, they're the one to tell the biggest lie. I never said a word. Remember, if he talks about others to you, he will talk to others about you. About you. If somebody will come up to you and say, hey, I got something to tell you. Do you know so-and-so? Man, you better run. Because if he's telling you about somebody else, guess what he's going to do? He's going to tell others about you.
They, they take a malicious delight in spreading scandal, informing on others, and breaking confidence. A faithful and true friend knows how to maintain your confidence and remain, or excuse me, and refrain from talking. If he is a true friend, your secret will stay secret. If he's a true friend. See, we, we go and make friends with people not knowing what kind of people they really are. We never investigate. We accept people for just what? As they are. Without any discernment in any way. We accept people and next thing you know, we are hurt by those people. Second person you want to stay away from is an anger Per, a, pro, a person with anger problems. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24 to 25 says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his way and get a snare to thy souls. You ever notice something that you hang around a person long enough, you start to take it on that person's traits? Hmm? You start taking on his traits. You know, it, it's amazing why, why they say, if you, you know, if you get in trouble and you, you, know, they, you go to jail, go to prison, whatever, when you get out, the first thing they tell you to stay away from is who? Your old friends. Your old friends. It's amazing how who we want to identify with that is the people that that are like us. If we're a person that stays in trouble, we're going to get with people that what? Stay in trouble. No change. We don't want no change. We accept people. People come up and tell you all these words. It, it's amazing how a person that can, is a smooth talker can talk you into something that you need to stay away from. Hey, I got a good deal, brother. You know, me and you are buds. We are friends and all like that. Why don't you come up here? I got something I got want to sell you. What he didn't tell you was, two days ago, he was the one that stole it. But when the policeman come and get and pick you up, they don't ask you, was you there the other day when this was stolen? They don't ask you that. They said, you are holding stolen what? Goods. Angry. People get angry. You ever see people, they walk up there and dare you to knock the chip off the stone? Oh. And, and if you don't knock it off, they'll kind of lean a little bit so it'll fall off so they can get what? Angry. But these are the people, your friends. See? A discontented or disloyal person. A discontented or disloyal person. Proverbs 24, verse 21 and 22 says, My son, fear thou the Lord and the, and the king. And meddle not with them that are given to change. For their calamity shall rise sudden, suddenly. And who knoweth the ruin of them both? These are the people that you can never please and you can never satisfy. When, what, I don't care what president we put in, it ain't gonna, they ain't going to please everybody. I don't care what it was. If somehow or another I got elected, I'm going to make a whole bunch of people mad. 
Why? Because they're never happy. When I was in the United States Air Force, there's one thing I can tell you I was loyal to. I was loyal to the United States Air Force. I was loyal to the United States of America. I was loyal to the President of the United States. He was my commander in chief. And if he said, go to Korea, I went to Korea. If he says, fly to Iran, I went to Iran. But it's amazing how many disloyal and discontented Americans are in right now in America. that you can't please or satisfy any of them. I like that Facebook thing, and it says, if you don't like it, go find you another country. Huh? Hey, I fought for this country and would have died for this country. I'm going I'm to go a little, little deeper. There are people in our congregation today that are discontented and are disloyal to our pastor. And you go, no way. Yeah, they are. Why? Because you hear it all the time. Well, I just don't like this. And I just don't like that. I don't like the way he do things. I pray that Brother Woody lived to be 120 years old. But I could have promised you one thing. There was coming a day and Brother Woody would have to step down. And that another man of God would have to step in. Amen? So why is it that we get upset? Why can't we be loyal to the leader that we have? I better go on. It, it just bothers me that why is it we can't be loyal to the things of God? Man didn't put him in, God called him. And if God called him, then God's going to use him. Amen? And if we're followers of God, if we're true friends of God, then we're supposed to be loyal to our leader. Amen? Now, I ain't going to tell you that about the United States because now the United States is trying to force us to do something that I am a Christian is going to have to be disobedient about. And I might have to go to jail. Okay? Because God didn't make Adam and Steve, he made Adam and Eve. And understand that. And so when they're going to make me do something, I'm going to have to be disloyal to them about what? Because my first option is to God and not to man. And so therefore I'm going to have to do what? Take a stand. So, what are you? Are you one of those friends? Fourth thing I want you to look at is an immoral person. 
have no morals. Proverbs says, in 29.3 says, Whoso loveth wisdom rejoices his father, but he that keepeth company with the harlots spendeth his substance. And everybody knows the story about the prodigal son. And we know what he did. He went up one day and he asked his father, said, Father, said, I want everything that belonged to me. And we know, cutting the short, story, or short a little bit, what did his father do? His father gave him his part, and what did he do? He went off into a far country, and he found him some companies, and he bought into those companies and become wealthy. Is that what happened to him? No. What did he do? He fell in with the local group and the local bars and everything else, and next thing you know, he didn't have a thing, and he wound up eating the husk that even the pigs And it's amazing why we as Christians want to hang around with immoral people. It's amazing why we as Christians want to hold on to our immoral friends. You know, it's amazing. you know what the biggest amazing part about it is? You don't see them out there trying to witness to them and win them to the Lord. But that was so often we got to hang around with them. Why? Are they any good for us? No. We found out just a while ago that those same people are going to cause us to be doing the same thing they are doing. person that's out there partying and, and, and living up and doing the things that they're, they're, uh, they think is right, are they going to be the one that's going to tell you that you need to hang with your wife? A person that's already found two or three other women, is he the person that you want to be around when you're going through struggles with your family? Are you looking for a person that's going to tell you what he thinks instead of what you ought to do? Number five, E, is a self-centered person. A self-centered person. Too interested in your own self and the cares and caring about the needs and the feelings of others. You, you've caught up with this thing about self. It's either I, 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 or me, me, me. Or my, my, my. I mean, if you got friends like this, get rid of them. Because they're no good for you. It, it, it's amazing how we, we sit there and choose friends that are going to tell us what we already know. Find somebody who's going to tell you what you don't know. Find somebody who's going to tell you what you don't like. That's going to sit there and tell you, thus saith the Lord. Find somebody like that. Somebody that's going to that, that's gonna tell you what you don't want to hear. When I'm going through something, I need somebody going to tell me what I don't want to hear, not what I'm wanting you to tell me. If I'm struggling with my wife, if I had a wife, I wouldn't want somebody, some guy to come up and tell me, man, I tell you what to do. The best thing you do is just get rid of it. You don't have to worry about it. No, I want somebody that's going to tell me, Brother Turner, God gave you her. And this is what the scripture said. Because that's for my good. 
and that's for God's glory. But we go up and we'll accept all kinds of friends. So, note, so are you, are you one of these kind of friends? Are you a gossip monger? Are you an immoral person? Are you an angry person? Are you a self-centered person? And so, don't come to me. I don't want you to be my friend. Why? I can't trust you. When I'm going through something, I want somebody that I can trust. I want somebody that, that's going to love me and care for me enough that's going to be there for me. It's going to pray for me when, when I don't know how to pray. So what is a true friend like? Proverbs 18 and verse 24 says, A man that findeth friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Proverbs 17, 70 says, A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born of adversity. So what, give me some something that I need that I can look for and say that this is what a good friend is like. This someone is going to spend time with you. Someone is going to spend time with you. Only through uh, getting together will we ever get to know one another. It, it is amazing how we set up here and, and, and we don't know the people that's in our own church. The young people don't want to have nothing to do with the old ones. And the old ones are think they're, you know, well, guess what, them young ones, they don't know what they're doing. And they ain't going to know what they're doing if we don't get with them and share the wisdom and the knowledge that God has given us. It, it, it's a shame that we won't, don't want to spend time with our fellow man. We don't want to become friends. <laughs> I wish I had all the young couples and stuff like in here. I'm going to give you some wisdom right now. Why is it that young men will seek out young men for wisdom instead of going to the older men and the older people in the church? I don't understand that. Why is it you're going to go to somebody that's only been married a year more than you and expect them to tell you how you're supposed to be in marriage? I don't understand that. I see it all the time. What is that person going to tell you that you don't already know? Find somebody that knows something different and let them tell you something that's going to help you. But I see it all the time. We don't spend time with each other. Care less about them. We look at them, ah, them old people. I ain't got time for them. You better. Or you're going to be in trouble. Why? Because they've already been through it. And they know what the answer is. Now, back up a little bit. You old people that want to get married and married and married and married and married, like. Marilyn Monroe and all them other ones. Okay? No, don't go to them. Please don't go to them. Why? Because if you ain't willing to stick in there and stay with somebody, you ain't going to ever get to know them. God gave me 31 years with my beautiful wife. Okay? 
And if he gave us another 30 years, we'd still be married. And you said, why? Because what we were starting to find out was the closer we got to each other, the better we loved each other. Hmm? When you first get married, you're two single. You haven't become one. It, it, it's like Brother Rudy. I, well, I love Brother Rudy. Uh, and people go up there and say, well, Brother Rudy? Yeah, I love Brother Rudy. Because he's hungry for the word of God, and I get excited. He gets me excited when he, I go up there with him. Man, he comes with all these questions and stuff. And I get to sit there, and man, and whew, I know sometimes I'll be saying, Lord, I can't answer them all. I don't, you're going to have to help me here. You said, well, Brother Rudy, Brother Rudy, I know Brother Rudy is working triple time. He's trying to take care of his parents, and he's trying to take care of his wife's parents, and he's trying to work and take care of his own family. And, and man, it's so exciting because I get to spend time praying for Brother and, and hearing him. And everyone, I text him and say, hey, Brother, how you doing? And he, well, I'm still struggling. Hey, man, he's still in there. That's good. You said, Wow. But I want him to say, I need you, brother. Young man, I'm an old man. Sometimes we we walk around here and people think, well, look at oh, that old man I beat up when they leave the scene. We can do what we want. Oh no, you don't. You better get all the wisdom that we got. Brother James was telling James Blaine when we were talking one time, and y'all need to get with us old ones that learned how to, used to be farmers and stuff like and learn how to fix food, because one of these days there might not be no food. You might need to learn how to grow it. We have some wisdom. We have to have some wisdom. Might not look like it, but we do. I better go on. Not only that, but a good friend shares trials and tribulations with each other. When you're going through something, you want a true friend to be standing up beside you. When I, when I uh, lost my wife, I like to went crazy. There was three men at that time that lost their wives right, right, right together. They'd been together for a while. Used to sit in the house praying and ask God that he would take my life. Used to go to the car dealership just to to get out, just to have, have something to do. Nobody knocked on my door. Nobody came to see me. Nobody invested their life into my life. So I promised myself, that when I saw somebody else going through something like that, I would invest myself in their lives. You see, you didn't have to do anything. All you had to do was come and listen. A true friend. When you're going through trials and tribulations, they don't want you to talk to them. They just want to know somebody's going to be there with them while they're going through it. I 
I, I love Miss D. Miss D is an awesome lady. Sometimes I just like to sit there near when she's boo-hooing and crying and listen to her talk about her sweetheart. You say, why? Because it helps her. People come to church because they are hurting. They're hurting. They need something. They need someone. They need somebody to be in their corner. And it's a shame that, what's the name, we have 300 people here and nobody gets involved in other people's lives. We'd be here all night. I could go on. C is... Being thoughtful and considerate. Being thoughtful and considerate. Showing concern for the needs and rights of others. Reaching out to a true friend with a card or letter. In yours it says text. I'm not a good texter, but for text. And even gifts to let them know that you care. I'm talking about a true friend. We don't, we don't write no more. Nobody, we, we don't write no more. I think the worst thing they ever done was come out with uh, all these phones that we have today because we stopped communicating. You said, not really. We communicate. No, you don't. Sitting at the sitting, I went out to eat and was sitting at the table and watched young people sit there and text the whole time at the, the table. Never took the time to get to know the people they sitting at the table with. Not too long ago, I got a card was given to me. And in that card, the person shared some thoughts about how I blessed them. And I took that card and I got it on my mirror. It is the greatest feeling ever to know someone cares about you. And I watch it all the time. People are not thoughtful. People are not considerate. They don't, they don't care. And don't do it for the night, but I say. But when those doors, when Brother Kyle dismisses and those doors are open. It's like a racehorse, how many people can get out their door first. First. They don't want to take time to talk to anyone. We was talking not too long ago. It used to be in olden days that when you always invited somebody over to your house after church. After church was over, if they didn't have food on the grounds, you always inv was invited over to somebody's house afterwards so we can spend time and fellowship after church. Huh? Now, nobody does it. We have fellowships right here at the church. And if it wasn't for the deacons bringing food or the old people bringing food, it wouldn't be no food at all. Why? Young people don't bring food. That means they got to spend their money. What's going to happen when we die off? There ain't going to be no fellowships at church. 
Why? Because nobody wants to bring anything. Nobody wants to do anything. Brother Jim, would you come one more thing and I'm done? We don't do what we're supposed to. We're not thoughtful. We're not considerate for others. We don't want to get involved in people's lives. We don't want to be a true friend. Only thing we want to do is do what? Let me get home and get on my couch, put my feet up. And if it wasn't for, if, if Pastor never told us we had to be here for service, we wouldn't even think about coming back. And for some of them that are sitting out there at home and watching this right now, that's the problem. Well, I can watch it on TV and be just as good. No, it ain't. The Bible said we're supposed to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. Last thing. And I put this last for on purpose. If you are a true friend, then admit when you're wrong. Oh, you said, y'all said I should have put that first, huh? Huh? Admit when you're wrong. Take responsibility for your role in the conflict which damaged your friendship. <laughs> I, I said the other day, I, I, how many of you like Family Feud? Huh? I like Family Feud, right? Huh? The other day they had a, a group of all women. They was either sisters or mother. It was, it was all women. Huh? And the first thing they got up and said was, I mean, one, one of the things they were saying, you know what they said was? That women need, the men need to know how to shut their mouths. The problem is we keep our mouths shut. We don't open them. Men, they're always wrong. What? Why is it you can't be a friend in your own, with your own husband, and husband, you can't be a friend with your own wives because you're too selfish and you don't want to get to know them? It's amazing how many people be married for 25 and 30 and 35 years, and as soon as their kids leave home, they get a divorce. Hey, your life is already over. Why you want to get a divorce now? Should have got a divorce back there. You're going to get one when he was married two and three years. You, but now you're going to put invested 25 and 30 years in a relationship. You should be the best friends that each other have. Admit when you're wrong. Admit when you're wrong. Oh, if we could have some true friends. If we could have some true friends, can you imagine what kind of relationships that we would have as Christians if we had some true friends? If I'm going through something, the only person I want to have is that true friend that's going to sit there and pray for me. He ain't going to talk about it. He ain't going to say nothing about it. He's going to pray about it. True friend. Father, we come to you right now. We seek your face. Lord, I help, hope, dear God, that we'd understand when we're choosing friends, 
what kind of friend they really are. Lord, that we would seek those that are going to be there for us. It's going to share the, their lives with our lives. It's going to be lifting me up and not throwing me down. It's going to be a person that's going to be in my corner and going to pray for me when I'm going through something. It's going to rejoice with me when I'm rejoicing. A person that wants to invest some of their life into my life. They, they want to be a, a part, the God, of it. And then, when we fall out to God, they're the one that's saying it's their problem. Or I'm saying to them, it's my problem. Father, help us to be true friends. Help us to have fellowships and friendships that are second to none, that are filled with you and your love. And help us to walk according to your wills and your way. Thank you, dear God, for your word. Lord, it says that a true friend will show himself first as a friend. Help us to be true friends. And Lord, we ask this in thy precious and thy holy name. Amen. Amen. to help somebody today. Or are you that friend that nobody wants? Are you there just to find out information so you can pass it on? Are you willing to take that information and lift it before the Lord? What kind of friend are you?
So after this, how many of you still want to be my friend? <laughs> Amen. I want to be your friend too. Amen. It's good to see you and have you out here. They continue praying for the youth um, as they're on the trip. And that Lord will just work a special work up there in their hearts. And Lord, that they'll make it back safe and sound. They'll be coming back on Friday. So really be in prayer for them. Be in prayer for me. I decided to go on the junior uh, trip when they go up to Minnetonka. Uh, I, I, it, it's, that, I don't, sometimes I was saying, I went back home and said, mm, Lord, I don't think that was wisdom. <laughs> but I know the guy's got a reason. Be in prayer for I, I, I both our groups said this week and then the first of, uh, of July, then when they go, the junior youth and up there to theirs. And we also got vacation Bible school coming up, and, and I know they're in need of some things, so make sure you get with them. Miss JJ and help her with her needs. Be in prayer for our, our Sunday services as we um, prepare for them and get ready. Come here excited, want to hear from God. I think that's the most greatest thing ever, to come prepared to hear something from God. Amen? Any prayer requests? Yes. Okay. Mm. Yes. We'll do. We'll do. Anyone else? Yes, Brother Ricky. Amen. Amen. So I don't like Friday night here. Yes, ma'am. My Pam. Okay. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Let's pray. Father, we come to you right now, Lord Jesus, and we just uh, seek your face now. Lord, Miss D's family, dear God, I ask that you would intercede there for them, dear God, loss of a, a, a loved one, especially a child, dear God. Lord, we don't understand why they leave before we do, but you know all things. I pray, dear God, that you would just draw an eye to them, that you would give them the peace that passes all understanding, that you would comfort them, dear God, in their time of need. Miss Pam's mom, pray to God that you would just draw close to her, that you put your arms around her. Let her feel your presence, Lord Jesus. Lord, I know that she would give anything just to be here tonight or be able to come to church all the time, dear God. Lord, I, I, I can imagine what it's like, dear God, feeling so far away from everything and everybody. But I pray, dear God, that you would intercede there for her, dear God, that you would, Lord, touch her and that you would let her know, dear God, everything's going to be all right. Miss Pam and her family, dear God, I pray that you would draw close to them, dear God. Lord, Lord, let them be in her life like they've never been before. A joy, an excitement. And Lord, we just give you the praise and the glory for that. Friday night, dear God, when assault and light, the seniors come together. Let us have a rejoicing time. Let us have fellowship like it's never we've had fellowship before. Father, as we leave here and go to our homes, Lord, give us someone we can talk to tonight, tomorrow, 
Friday that we can share the gospel with, that they can come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Father, let us be a light to a dark world. Father, I pray for our country. Pray to God for our senators and Lord, get a hold to them. Lord, I, I pray for those judges that are making decisions, dear God, that there will be some judges that will stand for you, dear God. I pray to God that they would realize what's happening and they would stand against it, dear God. I pray to God from our president that you would save him. I pray that he'd really get saved. His life will be changed, dear God. I pray to God that you would get a hold of all the leadership, all the way down, even to our mayors, dear God. Lord, that they would realize that what they're doing is wrong. It's not pleasing in your sight. Pray to God that you would have your willing way there. Father, as we leave here and go to our homes, take us to our homes safe and sound, and let no hurt, harm, or danger come up on us. And let us be in our place in the next appointed time. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Oh, and fathers, men, if it's not pouring down raining, we're supposed to be at the park Saturday for the for cookout. Amen. <laughs>